four-man mosh pit followed by a tomb. Oh, no. Oh, a huge light bomb coming in on the Genji, and that's a five-man light bomb. They're going to follow up, and they're going to get one, two, three kills. And it's going to be everybody dying. Oh, my God. When does this happen? Everybody's dead. G'day. Welcome to another Nexus Gaming Series cast. We have this time Red Dragons facing off against the US Army Esports in Division C West, which is my division, as some people are aware, despite me having never played a match. <laughs> well, I only played one match this season, which unfortunately didn't go as well as I planned, but anyway, it is what it is. So we have Red Dragons, US Army Esports. Both pretty good teams. They're definitely in the hunt for getting into that top eight that playoff because i think both of them really needing a win here if they wanted to absolutely secure where they're going in it looks like someone there's a few more people reading up i'll just say make sure that i'm gonna note that i'm ready when they are so red dragons had a coin toss they actually chose Probably the first time we've actually had in these live casts someone pick what it's going to be. And it turned out that they actually guessed correctly. So they won coin toss. So they chose first pick, giving US Army Esports map pick. So we had the alternation of Cursed Hollow Band out, then Dragonshire, then Braxis Holdout, then Towers of Doom. I think I heard that correctly. And then that lead us to US Army Esports grabbing Sky Temple to start. Which kind of gives us a general idea of what we're going to see. We're going to see a uh, maybe a strong objective fight from US Army Esports. If you're feeling confident going here immediately, it'll be very interesting to see kind of what they want to do. Especially kind of it makes sense considering Dragonshire and Towers of Doom were also banned out. Maps where... Oh, I'm saying that though. Braxis is a very... Braxis is kind of just a two-lane cursed hollow, which someone may crucify me for saying that sentence, which, absolutely fair enough. That's a whole sentence that I probably shouldn't say out loud that may get me a... Uh, have someone going in, well, actually, no, but hey. It is a sentence I have made, and I'm going to stick by it. It is a two-lane version of Dragonshire, but both of those are banned out anyway. But it looks like people are just using the bathroom. So I hope you're doing well today, anyone in chat. You, you, all, all you lovely people. <laughs> but right. It looks like people are returning. So we're just about there, hopefully. No guarantee, however. But yeah, I should probably also have a look at a few other things. I also realized... More and more listening back to myself, because I do that, apparently, for some, whatever reason. Like, yeah, listen to yourself. That's a great idea. If you immediately hate it. Uh, I see, but yeah, a lot. And that's something I really need to try to cut down on. But if we look at the C West Division, we can actually have a look at both where both these teams are. And Red Dragons are a little bit below US Army Esports. So US Army Esports definitely... Oh, can Red Dragons make it? They have, what, three matches left? This one, no, two matches left. Red Dragons, I don't think, actually can quite make it, but US Army Esports definitely need to win this. Otherwise, Red Dragons can just cut it short and make sure that they aren't going to be able to make it through. I think that's what was said. Let's have a look. Yes. Very much this is up to US Army Esports. They need to always get a domination here. So they need to win this map 2-0 if they're wanting to take it away. Which, it's doable. But the Red Dragons team can pull something out of... They can just generally pull something out of their sleeves that may throw off some teams. They've gotten some upset maps taken off, take, taken from a few upper teams. I think they took a te map off a of team Greg... I can't recall exactly, but I can actually check while I'm talking about this. I'm definitely not stalling for time by using my words. Let's have a look. <laughs> There's some interesting ones, but we did have taken a few maps off a few teams. 
It's Crimson Five I'm thinking of, but not Red Dragons are still definitely able to pull something out of their sleeve. We'll still definitely be able to pull something out of their sleeves, I'm sure. Newest Army Esports do hold a little bit more map wins. But yeah, sure, they've gotten a, uh, roughly the same amount of wins, I believe. But we've gotten just one more over Red Dragons. But it does, with those extra points here and there, it does make it a bit harder for Red Dragons to kind of know where they're going to be. And man, people are taking their time. I know this map was already pulled back, pushed back by half an hour, considering so I just think some people are going to be late. Which, I, I guess it works for the players, but when it comes to my time, like, just swindling with I'm like, we already pushed back half an hour, and now another ten. But that's uh, just on me to complain. It's no, by no means am I holding against the teams. I know life happens. I know sometimes you're like, oh, I've got to do this quickly before we start. Hmm. Just, just twiddling my thumbs, hoping we get going soon enough. So I'm just going to have a look at kind of what each of the comps run so far, just because we can break this down. So if we have a look at it, both of them run relatively similar heroes. I think, wait, do they even? I think the offlane does. Their top most played are definitely... Oh, they got a Tychus shared between the two teams. That's probably one of the main things to note. We see one team saying they're ready. Okay, good. Yeah, they share the Tychus between the teams. Looks like both of them it's in their most played heroes. Sorry, let me sneeze. I felt that sneeze sitting there for a while, so I'm so happy it is indeed out now. Looks like we're just going to wait another team to ready. And I see an alright, let's go. So that's good news. We're going to get into the game relatively soon then, which I am excited for this series because it should be close. And thank you, Icy Morning, for following. Despite my nose just dying. And there we go. Sky Temple, let's get into the draft. Red Dragons banning first. What are we going to see? Are we going to see maybe a Grey Main ban? A Dahaka ban? What's going to be my first guesses? No, we get a Stukov banned out at first, which... Fair enough, he's an annoying one to go into. I would probably ban him out as well. Now. US Army Esports, what are we going to ban here? Ragnaros for Fire Lord is banned. Interesting! It's probably not one of those, like, kind of most banned out heroes by any means. It's pro it's definitely one of the more common ones, but... Uh, not... It's definitely one of the least common ones, but I do think that if there's a... Oh, yeah, there is a Ragnaros main, huh? Makes sense now, but I'm looking at it. But I guess Lava Wave can get a lot of value, as well as Sulfur Smash. And then we see Tahaka banned out. Tahaka, pretty... Pretty good ban. Pretty safe to say, yeah, that's going to be our main priority here. It's... it's it may not be the best, best map for him in saying that, just because there's a decent gap up top for him to rotate, but not quite the biggest. And Stitches, does that say anything about what they want? Are they wanting to run a Mephisto, maybe? Are they wanting to run Greymane? Are we going to see Joanna picked up at first, because Joanna is still up? There's Joanna. I'm wondering why the Stitches, they must have some high priority target they don't pick. There's Greymane picked up, and Brightwing to follow as well. Two pretty good heroes. The more I've seen Greymane played, the more I've also played him, despite me never being actually good at him, the more I realize just how good Greymane could actually be. And that is interesting, because I'm like, I'm not an auto-attack player. I, If I'm going to play Assassins, it's usually mages at most, because I am garbage at auto-attacks. But Greymane is one of those ones I do actually enjoy, and you can actually get away with a lot. Now we see Tychus and Rhaegar picked up for the side of Red Dragon, so a couple more expected heroes were picked up there. But what, we need offlane, and we need the, uh, probably mage is going to be the other thing picked up. Hogger? Leoric? Kind of those are the main ones I'm thinking of here. Who's the others? Bales and Jacobia. 
Deathwing band out. Interesting. I do like a good old Deathwing band every now and again. It doesn't look like it's been too successful for them this season, but it is at least a good one to... A pretty safe one to ban out. Oh. Is it? I don't know. Greymane can kind of do well against it. And we see Sonya banned out for US Army Esports, which... It looks like they've played a decent amount of Sonya, but definitely we're seeing a choke now coming out onto this bruiser. And I'm wondering if we're going to see a Leoric picked up here or somewhere else. I'm always a fan of the offlane blaze. I love good blaze action just charging on in. But keep in mind that US Army Esports do also still need their tank, which looks like to be a Nubarak. And I imagine that ETC is the offlane, which I love a stage dive ETC. I hope. I pray. Wait, no. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Shrinks is the offlaner. Yes. I was getting myself confused. But right, off lane. Probably Leoric. Damage. Kalfas? Chromi? Orphia. Okay, interesting. And more interesting is Thales is. N oh, they're probably going to swap. I was like, Thales isn't usually the Bruiser. The Bruiser is usually Tracopia. So I was very much wondering about that one. And B Sanger82, you're the last one to pick. Chromie, Jaina, Li Ming, Chromie or Li Ming, maybe? One of those two? Zagara. Not what I was expecting, but I do indeed like it, especially in these larger maps. If you get a if you even get a little bit of freedom, you could get away with a lot. But right, both these drafts, yeah, there's a pretty good team fight by US Army Esports, but there may be some very good burn onto those tanks between Tychus and Orphea. But without further ado, that will be it for this little portion, so I'm going to run the opening re reel and let's get on the end of the game, so I'll see you on the other side. Coming in on the Genji, and that's a five man light bomb. They're gonna follow up and they're gonna get one, two, three kills. And it's gonna be everybody dying. Oh my god, when does this happen? Everybody's dead. God, I really need to like make my own voice real for one of the openings because we're still waiting. Because apparently, the launcher hates me sometimes and decides to take 10,000 years, albeit we'll probably see it someone's internet in particular. So we get to see this team's now actually just cool while we're here. So Life's Cutoria is playing Joanna, Dizzy is on Rhaegar, Fails on Leoric, Pandemonium on Tychus, and Jacobia is on Orphea. And that was for the side of Red Dragons. Meanwhile, on the other side, when I don't get talked over by the announcer, we see that USA, USAE H Badger is on the Anubarak, B Singer 82 on the, oh god, I can't remember the name, Zagara. Simeon on the Brightwing, Fracture on the Policeman himself, Greymane, and we do see that, oh, Shrinks is on the Tigers, not Tigers, wow. That's not even remotely correct, it's ETC, it's not even, it's not even the same, what's the word I'm looking for, universe? ETC, what you want to do is just briefly show on the circle. No? Okay. We do see actually that it is now the side of Red Dragons just running down bottom as fast as possible. We'll see what we get. We see that bottom tower is already down. B Singer. Oh, not B Singer. USA H. H Badger is the only one hit by it. So, fortunately, not going to go down. And Simeon is actually the one who takes most damage. But there's a decent amount that also went back onto Pandemonium and Jacobia, I guess. B Singer throwing out Banelings as they're running away can do a decent amount of damage. We do see that is now an early little bit of structure lead over to the side of US Army Esports, which I like it. Sure, it ain't I, it's not Sylvanas with her black arrows, but with the summons of Zagara, you can get away with quite a bit of that kind of split push. Speaking of which, you just some coming back down, and we do see that they have gone in fast. So that'll be an interesting one to keep note of, especially in this. Like, it hasn't proc'd yet, but once we see the first K, it will then do that extra percent, so on and so forth. But it's just a little bit of a slow burn. And there's actually no quests at level 1. And let's go see where Svet is right. Valkyma. 
Should be a good one. And we do see that they are actually going to get very aggressive. They, you, Red Dragons know that US Army Esports may not be able to straight up match their damage this early in the game. And they're going just to take the siege camp of US Army Esports. But Fracture is there to do a little bit of cleanup. Bees are take a little bit more damage than they may have accounted for from their just one grenade from Tychus. Especially because they are, I believe it's running gun. Nope, dash at level one. Maybe running gun is V20, I believe. We can see ETC is getting collapsed upon and very good clear happening by Red Dragons, but US Army Esports does have that experience advantage so far. As we're getting a very kind of safe four-man rotation, I'd like to say, from Red Dragons, but that means there is a bit to believe to leave desired when it comes to the soak. As you are going to be missing out on those globes here and there. Look, Zagara is going to be getting as much value possible as bottom. Like, and even here we see a few of those globes in the back line that is that is going to be that diminished value if you are red dragons. So I don't know if this four man rotate maybe is the best. Oh, we do see the Auric goes down, which good rotate by the side of US Army Esports because well. Lyric's one of those hard ones to kill. If you don't CC chain them properly, they are going to go down. And the only quest to note at level 4 is Subdue. And I'm going to open up Talents while there's a little rotation coming up. Is healing relatively even. Hero damage relatively even. And Siege relatively even to Greymane and Leoric. But let's close that. We do see Shrinks is going to take a decent amount of damage in process. And that will unfortunately be the cow going down. Cows are not good against bullets, it turns out. And that is ETC going down. Meanwhile, Zagara's just pushing. Like, yeah, I know objectives can do a lot, but Zagara is seeing what value she gets, especially because she does have those Medusa Blades, which do, which does let her clear, like, many things at once. Well, we do now have a split for the side of Red Dragons, and I don't know if that's maybe the smart, the smartest, as US Army Esports can't quite take out Dizzy, 63 health left, but nope. We do think, actually, Brightwing manages to steal the kill from Fracture, and that is a kill in favor of US Army Esports. Well, ETC has bullied Orphea off, and now what well, was a pretty good spot for Red Dragons has kind of been taken away from them because Thales really had to deal with B-Sanger, and B-Sanger trying their best to get out of range of the spooky ghost man himself, Leoric. Which you can see Leoric does use tap and is going to need to use anything else, but we can go back up here. Fracture getting relatively low, trying to back out as much as possible. Down to only 150 health, but does hold on. Shrinks gets a nice slide through Jacoby and Pandemonium. USH, oh, I shouldn't really not call him that. H Badger is going to slide in, see what they can get. But no, the Adubrak decides that's a good way to get squished and backs out before too much more can happen to them. Meanwhile, B Sanger is just hard pushing bottom. Thales is trying their best to hold them off, but it was not really the easiest for them. As Zagara is one of those ones that can bully out Leoric quite well. Because they can play at max range. They don't really have that massive health pool to give Leoric all the health that he needs. And yeah, we can see that maybe they're considering another invade. Pandemonium, check that bush. Nope. I should say a live scutoria, check that bush. But now we see four members pushing into the side of US Army Esports. And they have to back out. They give the camp to Red Dragons. They're not wanting to take up the straight up fight once again. And I wonder if that will change when tens come in. Just because there's some very powerful tools that they get. They can get I love stage dive. I, I do love off lane ETC stage dive, especially when you do have this kind of off lane damage auto attack build. But I don't know if it will be the optimal pick for him. I it may be Yeah, actually I'd say it's almost more likely to be the Mosh Pit, especially because what? Uh, maybe three heroes interrupts, only two currently, because we have Joanna W, as well as Grenade Tychus. But I imagine we're going to see Crushing Jaw, and I imagine we're actually going to see a Deadly Auric, who is just at the bottom of my screen. But also, things to note, we do see the Wise Endures picked up and Bile Drop. And I was correct, in fact, it is staged I've picked up. We do also see Cocoon from the Anubarak. Why did I close that? Nidus Network on the Zagara, which, yeah, fair enough. And we do have Bond Ejector coming up as well. We do also have Gopher for Frog Grey Main. And Blink Heal Brightwing, which relatively... I was going to say relatively standard, but no, not really. But on the other side, we do see a Bloodlust Rhaegar. Hell yeah. 
We do also see Crushing Jaws Orphea. Uh, Entomb Leoric and Joanna is holding her heroic. I imagine we're going to see Blessed Shield. But it's not out of realm possibility to see Falling Sword picked up. Come on, ETC can be late. He doesn't need to be here yet. He does have stage dive if need be. Which we can see he has come down now. Nice slide. And that's actually Rhaegar going down first. However, Rhaegar did manage to find Bloodlust before they went down. Simeon going on to Fracture. Didn't quite get USA H, uh, Badger, H Badger. Maybe like they're wanting. That is actually Joanna going down. Pandemonium now for one in danger. And that is a dead Tychus. But I imagine we're going to see B Sanger going on a little bit of a sojourn up top after this mid, after this bottom one goes down and start sending up their Nidus's more and more. Hmm. Let's have a quick look at the hero damage and other kind of stats. We do see Leoric is actually pushing top is the only thing I'll note here. I'll just hold it above it. Oh, no, hold it here. As we do have... Greymane doesn't actually have most hero damage. It's Zagara who does, which is interesting, though. In saying that, Fracture is only about a K, almost 2K behind. Soak, also to, Gray also to Zagara. Greymane not too far behind him. ETC, despite being a good kind of dueling offlaner, not exactly known for their... Um, Wave clear capabilities, more of your ability to zone out the enemy off laner and see what you can do about that. And we, But we do see on the other side, Tychus having the most hero damage for them. Miniguns are a hell of a thing. And once again, we're going to get another invade, which they've done this like on cooldown. Stage are coming in now, so this is not good for them. We do see a slide through Jacobia. Jacobia getting relatively low. Dizzy trying to get the objective, how unable to do so. We do see Bloodlust coming out after the Orphea goes down. Badger is backing out what they can. They get a nice stun onto Thales. Thales doing their best to hold on as well, has to back out, but it looks like it'll be Dizzy going down next. Greymane is just a little bit too much for them to deal with right now, and I would almost like want to see a boss call here. Greymane can do it, but if they're going to spread out, get soaked, it's just easier to play safe that way. Okay, currently, there's not too much to do on this map. Which is weird to say. We see Brightwing does phase shift top as he see, did want a little bit of extra help. And that is going to be this fort slowly going down. I imagine that Leoric doesn't want to quite go in there to stop that. We see now Greymane and Badger have started the boss. I should really just call him Fragger inst Fracture instead of Greymane. Just because I'm using other people's names. I may as well use his. But I'm just apparently dumb. And only reading that one name while Greymane was just like sitting there as well. Which I'm not purposely avoiding the grey main. It just does happen out to be that way. Oh, we can do see boss goes over to the side of US Army Esports right as a double objective phase comes up. And if I was USAE, I'd want to make sure someone's on this bottom one immediately. Just because if you can get shots on these gates to go down and help the boss push, that's pretty good value. But no, it looks like they're just going to steal the siege camp of... Not Siege Camp, Bruiser Camp or Red Dragons, and use that. This. And yeah, we see this boss is quickly going down. Also, thank you, IC, for chatting away. Do like that you are here, and I will eventually respond to you. We can see ETC is solo doing the objective, while the rest of US Army Esports is pushing into that gate. It goes down now, but it looks like now the side of Red Dragons are here to fight. And Tomb doesn't quite find anyone. Pandemonium chasing with that... Commandeer Odin, nice stun by Badger. A little bit of poke damage by Pandemonium, but that's really going to be a nice... I was going to say, Pandemonium backs up. Badger goes in, but decides... Actually, you know what? Maybe fighting here is not an amazing idea. Maybe I just kind of back out and don't get myself killed. Which, in all honesty, not getting yourself killed is usually the best play. I wish I did that play a little bit more in my Storm League games at least, but it happens. It happens. I'm, I'm not known to be the brightest tool in the shed. But we can now see... I, US Army Esports is stepping onto the point. Red Dragon's looking to do the siege camp. And I imagine once again we're going to get a siege camp invade after this. But the last one didn't go as well as the others. So no, we do not get an invade for once. Instead we're going to see if they can do something about Shrinks. Shrinks forced to back out to safety. Which, a slide, is not the end of the world. Is Pandemonium Q? Yes. Interesting Tychus build. 
I like the move speed by Dash. Again, there's a lot of stuns here, so I may as well get Fanny Armor because we can see it is already out. There is a Bloodlust. However, Pandemonium is actually the lowest. Has to use that move speed to get on out. Phase shift coming up by Simeon. USA uh, Badger, are you going to go in? No, it doesn't go in on Dizzy. We do see they have a Burrow to safety out. And it's a good disengage by the side of US Army Esports because actually it wasn't the best fight from them. We've seen better fights from the others. And they were actually up talent tier and that Red Dragons were able to spook them. So it was actually really good stuff from Red Dragons. If you can force people out like that, I would, I would love to see what they do when they get their 16th through, when they get between through. Nice stun by Badger. Follow-up stun coming up by Trinks. And that is actually Tychus going down this time. Live Scutoria trying their best to get out. Will be able to do so. However, Dizzy may not be afforded the same nicety. We do see Fracture going onto them. Dizzy trying their best. Polymorph find him. Greymane manages to get the leap onto them. Take him out. And we see Joanna goes down to Badger and Shrinks. The two tanks taking out the third tank. The other tank. And that's all the tankage. And we may get an end call here, I guess. Or at least we're going to get a damage core as much as we can. We do see Orphea does get with a W, with a Q from Shrinks, a W, and then, however, even through the Polymorph, are able to get out. Fracture, however, disagrees with them getting out and gets the kill. So that's just yet another delay. And they're not going to poke core? Right, safe play. I, I respect it. I respect the safe play. I'm not the happiest about it, but I respect it. Temples are active. Right on. So where are we going this one? I pushed the wrong button to mute myself. Sorry, give me a moment as I'm just going to sneeze. Thank you for that. So as objectives are coming up, we can see... I think it was about 26 point something K on the Rhaegar. So Brightwing definitely pulling ahead at this point. Hero damage... Tychus doing enough, uh, what they can, but Greymane has been doing a lot, but Greymane, I know, is getting up there in Wise and Duelist, Wise and Duelist, whatever it's called. Siege, the Auric trying to catch up, play catch and make sure they get as much as they can, 108k, while well, Greymane is sitting at 90, so about a good 20k behind Red Dragons. And all while we can see ETC getting what shots off they can bottom, and now only, and only now top of start. So what needs to happen is... Red Dragons need to get on one of these objectives. Because this may be the end here, but it looks like they're not committing fully. And that may be all she wrote for the side of Red Dragons. It sounded like, nope, it was just a Q being used, but... 39%, these five shots are going to get it down pretty low. Fight's finally breaking out. Sage Live came up. And, but that will be the game going over to the side of US Army Esports. As Red Dragons didn't really step on at the end, which unfortunate. And I changed screens too early, but there it is anyway. But thank you for blessing me, I guess. So as we did cover before, Greymane did really pull ahead in... I didn't check how many stacks of Wise and Duelist he had in the end. Bugger. Uh, he did eventually pull ahead in the end with that Siege and Hero damage. Both being up the most for the side of US Army Esports while Red Dragons. Tigers had most hero, hero damage and Leoric had the most Siege. Meanwhile, healing... Rhaegar was catching up in the end. They did get themselves a little bit closer to Brightwing, but unfortunately for Rhaegar, it just was a little bit too much, and they couldn't quite keep up with damage, and that was everyone kind of going down. And yeah, so Lyric tried their best to keep catch the side of Red Dragons up. So looking at talents, so I'm pushing the wrong buttons to look at said talents. Uh, Joanna build makes sense. Interesting, we see the healing reduction picked and not the... Um, I like the move speed on W. I feel like that's a great one to get on top, but if the, if the Q works, it works. And by no means is it bad, because minus 35 healing is a lot of healing. Otherwise, we see pretty standard Rhaegar build, Totem, Leoric, yup. Creepy hand build, that ghost build, nice. Leoric, uh, Tychus, yup. Pretty safe build, actually it works. Oh. I like Dash with the Q build just because it, you could stay on top of people so well with that Q. And Orpheus going that recently, like kind of like more skill shot hyper carry style build of Q. That, I can't remember what this ability is called. Shadow, when Shadow Waltz hits and you can actually get those end hits with it, it can do a lot very quickly, especially once 16 came, came through. 
So it's probably good that actually Red Dragons are able to end there because I don't know how it would have gone by the end. Has anyone seen the matches up? Nope. Otherwise, what we see... Pretty standard things across the board by this side as well. I say that, but we have um, Worgen form Greymane with that Wizen Duelist at level 7. Not common by any means. Some people consider it a meme pick, which... Not me. If you could pull it off, hell, may as well do it just because it's good stuff. And if you can get it up there, you are going to shred. I've seen it actually a few times picked in Div C. It's actually picked, it may be the most it's ever picked is in this division. Oh, before I forget, I should also tick for USA won that map. But yeah, let's go on over to map view before I accidentally kind of open my chat and just kind of reveal what people have been saying. So swap. Right. So US Army East Force takes the map. I imagine we're gonna see first pick from Red Dragons again. Just because first pick, very safe. Very safe, just go, yep, we got this. This is what we're doing. You're not stopping us. Bog off, go away, shoo. But right, what else? Let's just have a look. Because considering I have both these team pages open, I may as well look at it, eh? Red Dragons, what have you got? What maps do you usually pick? We're going to see Infernal Shrines, I have a feeling. Maybe Infernal Shrines. Maybe Voskaya? No. Maybe Garden of Terror. Garden of Terror or Infernal Shrines, maybe, if it is Red Dragons picking. Or maybe BOE. I don't know. But if US Army Esports is picking, what are we likely to see here? BOE? Oh, I would like to see a BOE, guys. Just going to... Please, BOE, please not Infernal. <laughs> I've cast a lot of Infernal this season, guys. Be, be nice to me. But, Sky... Oh, it is Infernal. Yay. <laughs> I love Infernal. <laughs> oh, goody. I am blessed. And it looks like that... Yeah, it does indeed appear that Red Dragons went with the first pick, as I can see that map was indeed picked by USAE. Which, fair enough, it is a another objective map kind of like Sky Temple, and they were actually doing very well on those fights. They're doing very well when there were actually those fights breaking out. Once we hit that level 10 onwards, as I said, like, yeah, level 10, it may turn over to them, which... On these bigger maps, you can definitely go those. Actually, we're just going to do a little bit of running down at level 1 through 9. And then let's fight a lot at level 10. And, well, US Army Esports pulled that up, pulled that off very well. Looks like both teams are ready. And I've said I'm ready as well. So hopefully we don't have to wait too long to get into this, seri this second map of the series. There it is. Let me swap it on the draft team and we'll... Screen and we'll see how it goes. What do we think first ban is going to be? Are we going to see the same ones? Because I remember Stukov was banned out first last time by Red Dragons. Are we going to see that? Are we going to see Tahaka? I imagine we're going to see Tahaka. Tahaka is just such a good one to kind of have on your side in general. But there may be other heroes you're more scared of because that Grey Mate did well. So, what are we going to get? Lucio is banned out. I guess someone can answer whether um, the healer player is like, is Simeon a Lucio main? It looks like they are. Oh, actually, they actually do pretty well on Lucio but by the looks of it. Not are you going to see from them now. Tassadar banned out. Okay. Yeah, that's a pretty good one to get rid of. It has good Shrine Clear. It does good damage. May as well get rid of a Tassadar because it's just too much of a hassle to deal with. Which, honestly, fair. That's a mood. Dahaka, Greymane. 
I imagine it's going to be one of those two. Which I'm surprised it wasn't Gray Man last game. I'm saying that. Anubarak. Yeah, actually, that's fair. Anubarak did do a lot of a lot of good vet map for US Army Esports. But Joe? Question mark? Is Joe the hero they let through? No. It is indeed Diablo. Yeah. It's good to get rid of that one. Good engage. Has that flip issue. Has a flip, which may be the reason they're banning out. But no, we see Stukov picked up first. I'm surprised Stukov got through draft, considering last time he was banned immediately. In saying that, I do like Stukov. Stukov has a really good ability for this map called that Silence BS. Because <laughs> just pop a silence puddle down in the middle of the objective and suddenly the team can't do anything. Don't love the finish rounds. But we see Leoric and Junkrat is picked up. Which I guess you are taking away a pick from Red Dragons. Red Dragons have... Well, let me have a look. As I'm pretty sure I read this before. Yeah, they most played off laner. Wait, no, it's Ragnaros. Oh, no, USAE's most played. Okay. Both of them played Leoric a fair amount by the looks of it. Also, welcome to stream, Jakey. I hope you're doing well today. We see Raynor picked up, and I imagine Garrett. Nope, there's Ragnaros. Ragnaros was in the first two bands last map for US Army Esports. So they may actually have a way of dealing with whatever macro pressure that may provide. Leora can do pretty well into it, but Lava Wave is a hell of a thing that can help you keep up on experience and actually solidify a lead. But when it comes to team fights, oh, I hope we see a Sulfura smash. I love seeing it. Right, next pick. Next first, next band, I should say. Varian, yeah. Yeah. Taunt Varian can be a hell of a thing. But imagine what, what would we see instead? Garrosh? That'd be a weird one, but possible. ETC? Just make sure your ETC doesn't use his W key too much. Hmm. Hard to say. Right, and final ban of the, of the game. Not the series, there's still maybe one more map. No, ETC is banned out. What tanks exist in this game again? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> I actually have no clue what tanks are in this game. But interesting ETC was banned out, considering it was um, Shrinks who played it last time. So what tank? I don't know. But we see Greyman picked up once again by Fracture, which not surprise. And Anduin picked up by Simeon. Maybe Garrosh? Maybe Garrosh is picked up here? Nazebo by Pan- Oh, I like good Nazebo. And yep, there's the Garrosh by Life's Cutoria. Ufa tank, no. As much as I love an Ufa tank, maybe not the place for him. Imperius, maybe a fun one. May, maybe. Oh, I haven't seen May picked. Blaze? Blaze. I would love to see a Blaze here, but not we see. I didn't even realize Joanna was still up. I mentioned it at the beginning of draft, and somehow we got all the way to the end without me remembering that she exists. Which, fair enough. But yeah, I'll be interested to see how this one goes. I think if the side of Red Dragons pulls off a combo that I think they'll be able to. That's provided they are going Sophia Smash, it could be good. But I guess we'll have to see we have, as we get into the game. So let me run that music and get on into it. Light bomb coming in on the Genji, and that's a five man light bomb. They're gonna follow up and they're gonna get one, two, three kills. And it's gonna be everybody dying. Oh my god, when does this happen? Everybody's dying. I should remember to run a prediction now that I'm remembering and we're still at the screen. We want this, we want red 
Dragons. Oh. Dragons. Us. USA. If you're a betting person, it is there. I know not everyone likes to bet points, but it is there if anyone so chooses to. Anyway, on the left-hand side of USAE, we have Jacoby on Ragnaros, Dizzy on the Stukov, I believe, Pandemonium on the, oh gosh, Nazebo, Life Scutoria on Garrosh, and Thales is on the Pew Pew Man himself, Jimmy Reno. I mean, on the right-hand side, we do have Shrinks on the Auric. Simeon is on the Andwin Badger. Oh, we can get a light bomb falling sword combo because we have Joanna on the field. We also have B Sanger 82 on V. Junkrat and Fracture on Greymane once again. Greymane just being a very good, like, all round person, which I do love the 10 channel points. So it's 10 channel points. Thank you, whoever's betting. It makes me feel real good. <laughs> it does actually make me feel good when people do use that because I know I'm not just setting it up for no reason. Uh, but we do now see that waves are going to start getting cleared. Junkrat, pretty good for that. And. Pandemonium finds a mine in a bush. It does happen. Not quite what you want to happen, but it does. And we actually see... Ragnaros goes down. Fracture went up for the kill on them. I guess Shrinks have a slow with that Q. And unfortunately for Ragnaros, that is an early first death. And you're going to miss maybe a wave? Not quite two, but definitely a wave. Also, welcome Ektar. Hope you're doing well today. Good to see you got your 10 points in. Oh, never mind. You got 590 points in. Fair enough. What's 600? I don't know. Maths is weird. No, no, it's 600. Yeah, I can see the one now. But we can see both camps are being taken by the sides. Well, by both sides, actually. We're getting pretty safe clears. Fracture's not going to really get interrupted. However, Red Dragons were getting very aggressive last one. But they're not getting quite so aggressive this time. However, they are going to step onto that bottom point. And that's an interesting choice, especially if Junkrat just decides to put a mine. However, Nazebo is the first one taken down. And, we, and that is now the side of Red Dragons ha having to back out, which I know they're blue. But we'll ignore that they're blue here. They are Red Dragons. Life Scutoria and Thales running up to Shrinks. Shrinks, however, does use Rayfork to get out. Puts a nice little W on Life Scutoria and is going to survive. Nice blind there by H Badger. Because I can't be bothered saying the USAE every single time. Because otherwise USAE H Badger is going to be a little bit of a mouthful as we get more into the action. However, Life Scutoria may be bit off more than they can chew. As nope, they are going to take a lot of damage. But they will not be going down. Because Greymane, not quite with them. A little bit harder to do anything with them. But yes, I believed it was saluting. But thank you, chat, for uh, confirming that. Because I am not the brightest tool in the shit. <laughs> what is it? Not the brightest crayon in the box. We do see Simeon is caught in the Zebra wall. Not quite where you want to be if you're an Anduin. And be doing their best to run. Only one spider on, unfortunately, they will be escaping. Speaking of spiders, let's have a look at what quests have been picked up. In fact, it's not spiders, but toads at level 1 from the Zebra, as well as the Voodoo Ritual, just baseline as Nazebo. We can also see Hand of Sulfurious? Oh, no, Sulfurious Hungers on Ragnaros, which I do like it. It's not often we see it, but hey, let's see how it goes. Meanwhile, we can see Joanna has gone subdue and a piercing light. We can see that the side of Red Dragons is only just doing their camp now. Well, the US Army Esports did push up their own bruiser camp was what I was trying to say. And there is now a, already an objective advantage for US Army Esports. Live Scutoria seeing if they can throw ba H Badger over wall. H Badger popping a bunch of cooldowns. Walk straight into a zombie wall. Maybe not the best idea. It takes a lot of frogs. The Faith Lies Cutoria, however, is the first one to go down and when finding the kill there. The zebra seeing what damage they can do into Simeon and Badger. However, both repairing relatively fine. Level 7s are through first of a side of Red Dragons. But that will be... Oh, for the US Army Esports, so Red Dragons are forced to back off. And that will be the Mortar Punisher. First Punisher of the game. Going over to the side of Red... Oh. I keep saying Red Dragons because they... I keep wanting to say Red Dragons because US Army Esports have a red team. And this only is really not, not the most fun one. But we can now see that US Army Esports... Uh, well, they're going to have to back off their own objective because... Ragnaros decided to pop that... Uh, what's it called? Molten Core. Which is not quite as easy to do things when Molten Core is up. That building won't take damage, which... Punisher is essentially wanting to do, so Punisher is forced to hit someone. It can get a little bit indecisive outside of its jumping phase. 
Nice blind by Badger. Badger over there backing out. Not wanting to deal with any mushrooms. Mushrooms. Siege camp being taken by both sides once again. So I can just zoom all... I was zoomed all the way out, huh? So just zoom all the way out so we catch both. That's a big payout, I believe, for Jakey if Red Dragons do win. But anyway, we see Jacobia and Lars Kutoria. Maybe in a little bit of a dangerous position now. Badger is going to try to get on top of him. Nice throw by Lars Kutoria. I don't know. However, don't know how it's going to go for them. Badger is being thrown in. Minus healing reduction. Oh, Junkrat concussion mine a little bit too early. Oh, God. That was really their name for Red Team. I want the... Oh, I hope next season we get, like, the blue team, the red team, the green team. And just have anyone who doesn't know colors just confused. We're basically going to make any caster's job a living nightmare if we do that, which... Now that I say it out loud, let's not do that, eh? Let's, let's not confuse me more than I already am, like, naturally confused on any given day. But we can see that Iron Skin is popped by Badger. Simeon relatively low. Also not in a great position to do anything. So camp is comfortably taken by the side of Red Dragons. Which I, I'm being so like, mm, they have a blue team, not for red team. Which I don't know how I got through a whole first map without messing this up as much. But hey, we're here now into a second one messing it up. So let's just go for, let's just call it fatigue and call it there. Because that is a, a plausible excuse from me. And we can now see that the side of US Army Esports is looking to maybe siege in. By getting a little bit dissuaded by Dizzy and Jacobia. Just because it's not always a team, always what you want to pick, push into. Especially if Ragnaros has Multicore up, which they indeed do. Nice route by Anduin, meaning they're able to get out. Life's Kutoria stopped in of their tracks. I do believe they have the um, Unstop up. They just chose not to use it there, which... Fair enough, at that point you're dismounted, you're not going to get too much value done. You're not going to get on top of them if you're not on your mount. Especially if you do have things such as Simeon slowing, you have stuns coming out from Badger. Nice unstop there, however. Good concussion mine pushing everyone away. Nice double root from Simeon getting another one of those stacks. Ragnaros is just above him, and there we see Lava Wave coming through. Speaking of Rorox, let's have a quick look at them while everyone's getting ready for that first next objective, as I'm going to... Park myself above the forest and shrine. But no, we seen the zebra goes down. He was indeed in tune, and I just missed that. So sorry, because it's a little bit distracted. But we can see Light Bomb Anduin. We don't see Falling Sword and Joanna. We just see Blessed Shield. They all go for Frog Grey Main, Riptide, Junkrat. We have Joe being thrown in, popping Iron's going to immediately try and best get out. That move speed from Jacobia coming in pretty strong, actually. It's a good. It's a good talent to help Garrosh get on top of people. But as I said, we also have Light Bomb Anduin. We've gone over them. Oh, in Tomb Leoric, that's the last thing I was meant to mention. Me on the left-hand side, we have Garrosh Taunt. We have that massive shove Stukov. Joanna, Scout of the Bush, not quite want to go in. Hyperion Raynor, Gargantuan on the Nazebo, who is still getting up there for his stacks in both Frogs and Baseline. The last thing to round out was, as we saw, Lava Wave. Right, Riptide is stuck on a zombie wall. Nice combo coming out there. It's a lot of damage. Last Kutori actually getting relatively low, but it's Anduin going down first. Stuck in the own tomb and silence puddle. But Vena is Garrosh going down. Jacobia trying to hold on as much as they can. Fracture wants for kill. We do see that Joe gets a kill, but Fracture is able to get a kill onto Raynor. And that will be a good few kills for the side of US Army Esports. Three for one at the end, which isn't... It's not great. It's not great that you lost your healer. Your healer is uh, uh, really needed, especially for things such as Fracture, who's going to be sent back to core. Not core, but at least their fort does... No, it doesn't quite have tap up. We see him backing out. But we do see now this fort is going to go start going down a little bit faster. Frozen Punch are making things much easier. Fracture just doing the camp underneath, so I'll move the camera down here. Life's Cutoria wasn't actually able to get that throw. Unstop pushed on time for Joanna. Pandemonium looking to step up maybe a little bit too aggressively, but Ragnaros did use one to core in the end. But during that time, Red Dragon's camp was stolen from them, which that's just rude. If you're US Army, if you're US Army Esports, that's just rude of you, mate. You could have just given Red Dragon's camp, but nah, you had to take it yourselves. Which honestly, a little bit, a little bit rude of you, mate. Not gonna, not gonna beat around the bush about that one. But no, let's get out of that mode as we see Dizzy is going to get pushed onto. See, I do wonder every time I see that kind of happening with Joanna. I wonder if the W would be W moves to be better. Fracture is pulled out of danger. Did happen to use roll at the same time, so tower shots broken immediately. USAE Badger gets the light bomb pushed on of him. However, looks like a little bit of 
commu miscommunication between Simeon with that light bomb and Badger, and well, that that didn't find anyone unfortunately. Which I guess that's good if you're on the side of Red Dragons. Red Dragons probably wanting to stem the bleeding that is all their own people dying. See now, Nazebo once again in trouble. Shrinks, however, one taking the most damage. As Nazebo already has those five frogs up, Pandemonium getting peeled for, but no, will not quite be saved by Viranal. But we can see at least Nazebo did take out the Leoric in the process. So, not great. It's not great for Leoric eating a face full of uh, giant toads. As you can see, Nazebo does have five of those up now, so can actually get a decent amount done with him. Shrinks, I should mention keeping vision for the team. Well, Badger and Co. looking to see what they can do. Junkrat gets bottom, but now has put themselves in danger. We can see that Jacobia does get rooted, but b are not really caring about it too much. In fact, maybe they're downfall. Nope. Nope, the trap does indeed find him. And now what was looking like to be a problem for b is a little bit more of a problem for Jacobia. I imagine we're going to see Blessed Shield coming out. Blessed Shield coming out. There it is. Riptide is trying to get back on top of him. Shove doesn't quite find Riptide, but does find Joanna. And Riptide does actually take out Ragnaros, barely with a sliver of health yet left. But Ragnaros will go down to the tire as it was running out of time, running out of health, and just running out of steam. And we do see 16s are through for US Army Esports, so I'll just quickly open the talents to see what they're doing. They are planning and pushing. But looks like there may be a little bit of gank attempt on Shrinks. No, they do decide just to back out and defend. Which, yeah, fair enough. Great main once again, 11 stacks of wise and duelists. We're very much liking this talent, which always surprise again, it always surprises me when I see it picked up. But I guess we could look at his build eventually and have a look at how he does with it. Because I think he's won almost every game with Great main, which is why I was surprised it wasn't banned out yet. See, fr shrinks and fracture clearing that. Now it is an arcane punisher. I'm going to quickly open his talents while we wait for the side of. Red Dragons to maybe push it. Healing, 32k Anduin. We're just going to wait for it to rotate to show me. Stukov's 32k as well. Damage relatively even. Siege, actually, Leoric has the lead despite Lava Wave existing and coming through now. But I guess the Siege is shared a little bit. Oh no, they're just behind. Hmm. Now Zebo choosing to push top. You have Gargantuan, you may as well. You have Zombie Wall, you may as well. There's Zombie Wall. Fracture, however, is coming up underneath Pandemonium. Pandemonium is now in danger. And... Three hits, and they were dead. Dive, auto... Oh, four. Dive, auto, auto... Go for throw. And what what happened before is that because... US Army Esports e weakened this tower, it's now going to be much easier for it to back jump in. It's not going to take quite as much damage as it could have. Unfortunately for Greymane, Fracture, I should say, couldn't quite save top. But they did at least clear out the clamp, for, clamp camp before it did too much else. Jacobia is... Oh, poor Joanna, but fortunately there's a remnant of a building there. Oh. And that was actually... I was going to say, Riptide getting cancelled as Junkrat was cancelled out of it. However, that's all she wrote for that. Garrosh, however, Garrosh did go down. Nice blind from Badger, as I'm going to close. I actually opened the wrong thing, so you quick see talents and then close it. Fracture has now rejoined the team. Pandemonium getting unnecessarily risky with their rotations. Shrink seeing if they could do anything about it. Nope, just decided back out. It looks like they may be considering doing their own camp, maybe setting up a gank bush, which indeed they have. But I don't know if the side of Red Dragons are going to be really willing to step through here. We can see now they're pushing on to Dizzy. Put Dizzy. Oh no, Dizzy. You turned around. Yep. And Tomb gets dropped. Lava Wave going to come straight through. May be able to find a decent amount of damage. Simeon actually taking a lot. Fracture and Shrinks going down as well, actually, though. And what was a bad start for Red Dragon suddenly is in a very good spot. We see Taunt coming out. Pull coming out onto Shrinks. However, Badger is going to be stuck between the rock and a hard place. Simeon getting pulled onto them. Nice. W as well. Getting a little bit of healing off there as a double root. Hits two members. Badger is going to be trying their best to escape. Just holding towards their forts. Simeon going up. Unfortunately, Garrosh found a bush in the meantime. Uh, not a bush, a trap in the meantime. And what didn't go great for the side of US Army Sports only means that Red 
dragons, I nearly call them red badges, and now very much in this. And that lava wave, you can see, just managed to cleave through both the Nazebo and the Junkrat, as well as with the poison from those toads. Just was too much for them to overcome, and they did fall. Shrinks finds Pandemonium and Camp Pandemonium. Now not feeling so sure about this, decides to back out. Badger manages to find Q Life's Cutoria. However, it's sort of Sibian with the E. We're going to play relatively safe. Life's Cutoria wanting to get the flip onto someone. However, no one's presenting the opportunity. Nice double root by Sibian. Stepping up a little bit too much. Nope. Not quite enough for Life's Cutoria. Nice and tomb onto Ragnaros. We do see Blinded by Light coming out. However, it's a dive. We see Light coming out. Trinks does hit Life's Cutoria. And they now decide to almost ignore the backline. They ignored the garage for a little bit there, but did eventually take out the kill. Jacoby is going to be the next one in danger. They're going to be taken out. Maybe? Nope. We see Fracture, USA, uh, Badger, and Simeon instead going onto Thales. However, Shrinks was able to find the kill onto Ragnaros. Thales getting relatively low. However, the kill not quite found of him yet. Dizzy not finding the push onto Stukov they needed. Nice auto attack by Fracture. However, it is going to be b and getting them back over the wall. And that will now be trouble for the side of Red Dragon. As now, this could potentially be an end for US Army Esports, as they do appear to be wanting to go bottom. They're not quite clearing out the wave, they're just getting rid of the Fort Keep itself. Which, I guess if you get another kill here like that, it may not be quite as good. Trink second is taking a lot of damage. That W heals him so much, that 40 armor does so much. And now we're getting pushing core. Keep in mind, Garrosh, I nearly call him Diablo, is nearly up. He's up actually now, now that I'm saying it. Fracture getting a little bit too aggressive around the core does roll to a safer direction than next to Garrosh. However, we do see Thales is going to get relatively low. Scared off by Fracture a little bit. Fracture not quite getting the shield off. Does roll into the lava wave. Dying at the end there. I'm going to quickly show this so I can quickly get most talents, most stats since we had five stacks at the end. And that is the game and the series going on the side of US Army Esports. GG call by both sides. Well played. And let me swap it on over to my summary screen. Right, so at the end of it all, it was US Army Esports taking it, taking that map. While Nazebo had the most hero damage by a lot, those toes did a hefty amount. It was still kind of Grey Mang trying to keep up with him, but Naz couldn't quite pull on the carry pants for their team. And while it yeah, did look like that US Army Esports were absolutely pumping up that damage, doing what they could. Oh, sorry, Red Dragons are doing what they could. US Army Esports just had a less chaos damage, is probably the best way to put it put it they were very much all on one target and that target usually died as opposed to the splash going all over the place so while i did like how red dragons were doing just unfortunately there's a bit too much for them to overcome talents while we remember once again we see that for auto attack uh wargan build by gray main which is working wonders for him so i'm not going to knock it otherwise things are looking here pretty standard across the board here pretty safe stuff all around and let me just hop into Discord in case I want to see if anyone is willing to talk to me. If I, at USAE, come on in, the water is fine. Interview, question mark? And yes, I have remembered to say that, to unmute the Discord, which good. I've got to unmute myself in Discord as well. But imagine we may see Fracture join us in a few moments. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Oh, actually, Censure at 20 is always an interesting one. Let me tick off this. And let me flip on over to my map view screen. Because we'll keep an eye on the chat for a little bit longer. And if no one turns up, it is what it is. If I don't have to do the interview by any means, it's just more a nicety that we I at least offer it. Because I do want to get better at asking the questions. I should really write down just like a general list of questions that I ask. Go to the teams to ask. And now we twiddle thumbs and wait. I hope you enjoy that series, by the way, guys, in the chat. It was definitely a fun one. And unfortunately for USAE, it does show off a little bit of what they can do. <laughs> Which, if you're USAE, you're maybe not the biggest fan of that one happening. But if you are any of the other teams that's going to be potentially facing them, which it may be roll one, it may be... I think it's can't kind of stupid in our... 
There's so many CCS teams, but we do have Fracture, so... How are you feeling after that series? It was a pretty good one by you guys. Definitely feeling good. Mm. Strong two games in a row. Yeah, definitely strong two games. That first map of Sky Temple... We did actually see a pretty good aggression early on from Red Dragons invading camps and such. Were you expecting that aggression? Um, yes. They're kind of like how we are. They're a team fighting team, and they want to like kind of be in the death ball. And like they picked a lot of strong heroes for like the Rhaegar, the the Johanna, um, and the Orphea. Kind of mm. like really really heavy at going in, and that's their specialty. So our game plan was kind of like. They automatically win 310, so let's not even like let's not even check that. As soon as we saw them going, we knew they were going to take the siege, and we just didn't even worry about it. It was like, hey, it's going to happen. It is what it is. Yep. And I think I even note noted during those early games that level tens where it came online. Interesting that you say that you're a team fighting team, but you did pick up Sagara. That's not really considered one of those kind of major team fighting heroes. And even we, early on, we saw her just pushing instead of joining those early objective phases. We're trying to change. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to change and props to her i thought she was going to choose more when i saw the bloodlust and stuff coming out but because i'm like maybe they go bloodlust which they did which i was very surprised but no it did look that like that uh nardis network definitely helped her in that first map and yeah as tens came through definitely things started to swing your way and then the second map is, it, is Infernal Shrines and Sky Temple, are they kind of your more confident maps, you'd say? Just because there's a good objective you want to fight on, or...? Um, actually, they've been maps that we've shied away from historically for quite a while. Really? Especially Sky Temple. Um, because we are heavily a teamfight team, we usually ban Cursed Hollow Sky Temple almost every game. Um, Understandable. Cursed Hollow, you... We're, we're trying to, like, move into macroing a bit better. Um... Just to kind of like round out the team, you know, like we know we can team fight, but like what else can you do? And mm. that's something that's been used in the past to exploit us was teams that had better macro, and so it's something that we're trying to work on a little bit. But uh, Infernal Shrines, uh, they took away our, they took away our shiny toys, they took away our Dry Shire and Towers of Doom, the maps we love. So uh, I think Infernal Shrines is a good, balance, somewhat balanced map that doesn't snowball too heavily. So if you get behind, you can kind of come back off a good team fight, and there's also mm. like three lanes of XP. So you don't have that two-lane issue where it's really hard to catch up once you're behind. Yeah. And I'm actually pretty happy you're the one who joined because I noticed something when I was doing a little bit of scouting on both teams as we were waiting for everyone to ready up at first, that your grey main has actually been a bit of a problem for teams by the looks of it. Are you surprised every time it does go through? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because I looked at that and saw, I think it's like 100% win rate currently in NGS this season it is and i can only hope to earn a ban <laughs> but it does it does surprise me when teams still let it through i won't i won't lie to mm. you it does surprise me but um, yeah love him to death favorite hero by far in the mm. game always will be and I, I do wonder why was ragnaros let through that time because you guys did say you want to you're a bit concerned about those pushing heroes and ragnaros once he gets lava wave can do a lot uh we intended to take it and oh it kind of came down to us looking at, like, Junkrat wins the objective, and they have a healer with no cleanse because they took Stukov. Mm -hmm. So Junkrat is really, really strong when there's no cleanse. It makes mm -hmm. it very hard to approach any area he's in control of. So it was like, okay, Junkrat is a priority, and Leoric is something that we know that they want, but we also want for Shrine Clear. So, like, all three of the heroes were kind of priorities for us, and obviously you can't take them all, so... We ended up taking a choice, and I was like, they're going to lock the rag. As soon as we locked the Junkrat Leo, I was like, they're going to lock the rag. And then they did. Um, so it was just kind of one of those things where, like, you can't get rid of everything. Um, mm. Sometimes you have to let certain things through. I was going to say, well, at least the um, Leoric choice did work out in the end, because barely beat out Ragnaros on Sok, and barely beat him out on the Siege damage as well. So, I get, so pretty good there, but I guess who would have known if that did hit 20 for both sides. Is there anything else you really... Oh, sorry. Um, no, I, th I thought they were good games for sure. Um, we kind of looked to, to, to spread our focus around the map a little bit better, trying to, like, manage our, our off lane and, like, when to push each lane. Mm -hmm. So, looking to do a little bit more macroing. We're still a team fight team, but we're <laughs> trying to, like, gain some 
I guess you would say more tools to, fight, yeah. to, to, to go into the playoffs with. That's our goal. But yes, to any Div C West teams listening, they're definitely just a team fight team. No macro. Just ignore what you saw in those maps. <laughs> uh, I mean, either way. Either yeah. Way. So obviously we're coming up to playoffs now. I think you guys with that... There is going to be a VOD. Sorry, I'm just going to point out to the person in chat. Uh, we're coming up to those playoffs. You guys with that domination, domination, maybe looking now just to sneak on in and that kind of bottom half. But who are you kind of looking forward to facing in this playoffs if you do get in? And who are you most scared of facing for this first round of playoffs? I mean, Roll One is definitely a really, really strong team. I think Roll One and Greg are both very, very dangerous teams. So, I, I can't really necessarily say I'm scared to fight either. I really am excited to fight anyone <laughs> and make playoffs. But I'm really looking forward to rematching Roll One and Greg because they both beat us. So I'm really looking forward to like, historically, teams that we've beat have beat us in playoffs, and teams that we've lost to we've beat in playoffs. So I'm excited to see like. If we can turn the rematch around, um, <laughs> definitely looking forward to a rematch. I'll around. relay that to my teammates and Greg, don't worry. Definitely. We're looking <laughs> forward to fighting them again. It was a really, really intense game. Yep. And is there going to be any last, like, can he thank yous from you? Can, you can save them now. Of course. Um, thank you to you for casting us. Thank you to NGS. Thank you to US Army Esports. And, of course, to my teammates and their families for putting up with all of mm -hmm. us um really appreciate it um looking forward to the rest of the games and looking forward to facing uh Bork side of the moon on monday oh that should be a good one as well but right thank you for joining me have a good rest of your evening you do the same thank you again right so that is going to be it for me we did have a 2-0 in the favor of us army esports that domination is going to very much put them in a pretty decent spot maybe by the time that they get to playoffs, they maybe got... I imagine they may be going up against CCS at this... Uh, yeah, CCS 6, I think, at this point. I can't remember what... There's so many numbers, it's so hard to keep track of. I'm sure Valkyrie may be lurking somewhere, doing the maths in their head, going, if this happens here, this happens here, then this is going to happen. But that's going to be it for me. I wish everyone here a good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending where you are in the world, because time zones are weird. But I'll see you in the Nexus. Good night, at least. Well, for now.